Thank you so much, and, and thank you for having me tonight. Um, it's such a pleasure always to be with our NAFCC folks, um, my favorite crowd. And we are going to be talking about STEM today, which is so exciting for me because I actually, in a past life, I was a chemical engineer. <laughs> so I went from a STEM career to um, the education uh, sector, and now I go back to STEM uh, from time to time and discuss some of these um these topics with with educators and it's it's so exciting to me so let's get started what are we going to do today we are going to be covering two things i i think that um because them there's so much in it that we can really go into i wanted to really keep it simple um, the first two the first few things that we're going to be discussing are just some stem basics and the reason why we start always with STEM basics is because we need to have a common language in talking about STEM and also some of the concepts that we think are important for young children. So we'll discuss some of those. Um, I know that many of you already have um, uh, a background in, in STEM and, and, and know a little bit about these STEM basics, but it's a, it's a way to get us started. And then we just are going to go straight into activities. And the activities you will notice are going to be divided into the everyday routines and interactions that you do with the kids and how they can either already show some STEM principles or for us to highlight those STEM principles. And then we're going to be talking about more um, perhaps uh, activities that need some planning and some um, and some more um, materials and and um, that are a little bit more involved, but they can also provide us with depth um, in some of the of the concepts that we're discussing earlier in the presentation. Okay, so let's get started. Why do we do STEM? We do STEM because it's um, in, inspired by the curiosity and the creativity of young kids, and they are in a young children are in a stage where all of these um, thinking skills um, are are developing they want to learn they want um, they they have this incredible sense of wonder and because they're natural scientists and they want to explore the world we should build on those explorations and motivate them by developing the skills that that later on could lead to stem careers to stem thinking um, they are active scientists. We know that children learn by doing, and STEM and all of these concepts are learned by doing, by experiencing them, right? That's, that's part of why um, all of these science concepts are so um, interesting to young children, because it, it is going back to what they innately want to do, which is touch, feel, uh, make sure that they're experiencing the world with their bodies. So scientific scientific inquiry is the way that we learn. And so the way that, that, that you motivate that learning can actually lead to so much more learning later on, to some, so much more understanding of the process of STEM later on. And I think that we are, as adults um, also have those curiosities. And in the, in the many years that I've gone to the NAFCC conference and met so many family child care providers, I can tell you that some of the most creative and most curious group of people are actually family child care providers. So this is, this is your thing. I mean, this is the type of, um, of concepts and the type of, uh, of material and area that, that you thrive. So I think that the, the combination of having family child care providers working with kids at this particular age in, in young children preschools is um, it's actually really exciting for, for us to be looking at STEM. But what is STEM, right? Um, STEM has been defined many different ways and um, the, the term is, is very uh, popular as we know now, but there are many different ways of, of addressing or perhaps um, trying to tackle some of the STEM skills that that we keep hearing. So let's let's start by breaking down just the letters. Um, <laughs> the first one is, of course, science. And science is the process of learning about and understanding the natural world. Through scientific inquiry, 
children build on their existing knowledge of the world around them, which is exactly what we, said, we were just talking about, right? Young children do ex um, experience the world through their senses. Um, they observe through their five senses. And that is what science is, is that process of observation. It's also, it's, it, it learning involves changing or modifying ideas and concepts to fit evidence from new experiences. So it's not just taking that observation, but it's also being able to modify what you're seeing and using the evidence that you're finding to create new ideas or to ask different questions. What you will see is that a scientist never stops asking questions, right? We, we, they finish an experiment and that experiment leads them to new questions and new ways of, of looking at their experiences. Um, this involves, of course, the, the scientific process, um, which includes observing, investigating, analyzing, reporting. And you see that that scientific process is something that children could be exposed to really early on. So from a child's perspective, science is about observation with the senses and also about these process skills that we can be, um, we can be developing with activities um, and, and really through highlighting the steps of the process as, as they, the children are encountering them. When you look at some scientific tools, you have some of these already in your programs, magnifying glass, uh, flashlight, a lot of writing tools, clipboards, journals. Why? Because a scientist, in order for you to be able to analyze what you're observing, you have to find a way to write it down. You have to be able to report what you are observing. So a lot of writing tools. Um, in our world, it can be a line that, that represents um, a drawing, but that, that line is so important. It means that children are starting to understand that what, when they are observing and they're writing something down, that is called reporting. So let's save those lines. Um, and then you see some of the vocabulary, which of course corresponds to that scientific process of observing, investigating, reporting. I, I love the word evidence because we don't usually use that word with young children. But basically what we're asking them when we're using that word is show me how you know, right? Show me how you know that that's true. Um, we can be talking about force, gravity, friction. Um, force is fun. It, it actually, uh, when you see some of the videos in the website, you'll see that um, some of the funniest moments with Grover is, are related to <laughs> force and gravity. Um, and then you have um, other, other words like translucent, opaque, transparent, which are also um, age appropriate in some, some words and, and concepts that we can start working with uh, young children. There's a lot of properties of matter here because we're using our senses to observe. So we are describing all of these um, uh, things that children are, are observing. So for example, science for a child may focus on using his lenses to learn about the properties of a stick, right? Um, the properties of anything that the child is, is looking closely with that magnifying glass, okay? That's science. Now let's go into Technology. Technology is the process of making a job easier using physical tools and simple, simple machines developed by manipulating materials from the natural world. So one exercise that we um, love doing with children is just asking what is technology. And of course, they start talking about technology and they think of the computer or they think of the cell phone. Actually, the cell phone probably will come first. But a pencil is technology. Um, some of the most, uh, a book is technology. Some of the things that they are, that they can see in their environment and that, that for them is, you know, almost obsolete are actually technology. Why? Because they're tools that have been made by manipulating materials um, from the natural world to make life easier for us to communicate, for us to be able to write is definitely better than um, what 
cavemen used to, to write uh, a pencil. So all of these examples are surprising for kids to know that they're, they're um, technology, but they are. And it's a really good way of starting that conversation of what technology is and how it evolves. A child uh, sees technology by using these tools and they use and and they are they manipulate their environment every day and you know it because you can see it as uh, when they're playing with uh, play-doh when they're playing with their blocks they're manipulating their envi environment so they are creators of technology as well as users of technology um, some vocabulary and these technology um, examples are are interesting because again goes back to some of what some of the scientific concepts of force and gravity um, are pulley. And if you're sitting down near your window, you probably are seeing some pulleys right now. A lever, which actually a fork is a lever. Um, wedges, which you can find on probably underneath your, um, uh, your doors. Wheels. So many wheels that you probably have in, in the toys and, well, actually everywhere we use wheels for so many different things. We could create scales and balances if you don't have some, but I, you know, sometimes at home we have them too. And of course, the, the two vocabulary words of machine and tool come to mind. But, you know, doing a scavenger hunt of some of these uh, technologies in your home can be a really great way of starting to talk about not only the, the cell phones and the screens, but also about the other different simple machines that we have in our home that are making our, our lives easier, right? And how they work. Now let's talk about engineering. Engineering is a process of using tools to design a product to solve a problem. It's interesting because uh, STEM uh, another iteration of the concept of STEM has become STEAM. And part of it is because when you will look, when we look at the skill sets that an engineer or a designer has um, and an artist have, they actually use very similar skill sets. Um, the only thing is that engineering, engineers use this, those processes and those skills for something very specific and very concrete, which is it's actually solving a problem. And so the, the idea of engineering is that there is a problem and then the engineer is looking for different solutions. What, from a child's perspective, they think of engineering, or we can expose them to engineering by building, by constructing, by designing. Um, children design all the time when they're playing with blocks. Children are constructing all the time when they're playing and manipulating the, the, and their environment. So it is motivating them and also giving them the tools and calling it that, calling some of these things um, by their name that can help them. So before a child is, is creating a block tower, can they draw it? Can they draw what they want to create? That, that is a step into understanding what designing is. So that's a, those are um, a good ways of, of introducing some of these concepts. In terms of vocabulary, creating, constructing, manipulating, which is changing, transforming um, uh, a, a tool or a thing. Uh, problem and solution are important words for engineers. And interestingly enough, a lot of engineers use trial and error to get to those solutions. And so when children, you see children trying something, it doesn't work and they, they, they change a tiny bit um, of what they're trying and they try again, that's great. That's engineering. Um, that's an engineer at work. And purpose, because in order for you to be an engineer, again, you have to have that, that purpose. Why is it that you're manipulating all of these things? because you're finding a solution. Now math, math is the process of understanding relationships among patterns, numbers, and shapes. I'm a bit obsessed with math, um, as my children will probably tell you. I love, I love math. Um, I love measuring, I love the, the fact that math is such an incredible language to describe the world and it helps us sort, it helps us analyze our world, and, and the child can be using math 
in those same um, in those same ways. Some vocabulary that you will see a lot of measurement when it comes to um, STEM activities because we use a lot of math through measurement, and because there are different units of measurement, uh, length, width, height, um, weight, because of this, you will see also a lot of talk about um, uh, informal measurement units. The important thing with the measurement units is, of course, the measurement unit cannot change as you're using it. So, for example, if you're trying to use, if you're trying to measure how many hands this, ta this table, the length of the table is, it has to be the same little hand that you're using to measure, right? Because that's, that's um, a key uh, aspect of, of mathematics, particularly in measurement. Okay, so we've gone through all of our letters. We have defined all of the different concepts related to STEM, but there's more because STEM is not only these different areas separately. STEM is the process skills that combines them all. And these process skills are very similar to the scientific skills that we, we talked about earlier, but they're not exactly the same. When you, see about, when you see STEM process skills, they're combining again, science, engineering, how we create technology, how we use math. And so here are some of these skills. Observing and questioning. Why? It's not just observation, because a scientist needs to question. And one step, in order for you to solve a problem, you first have to ask questions that can lead you and that can help you understand what the problem is. That's how you are have an engineering mind. So this first step, is very much this combi combination of science and engineering together. And then you investigate. And this investigation requires a plan. It requires you to understand, um, to try different ways and to, and to collect, to collect that evidence that many times is through measurement, is through math. Then you analyze. You analyze all of this evidence that you've been collecting and you go back to what you thought, your, what you stated your question to be. Um, and that is part of that analysis, going, being able to go back to, to that question and seeing, you know, what was I, was that correct? What was, what is it that I proved? What are some other questions that come, come back to me after get, uh, getting all that evidence? And of course, if this doesn't happen by itself, you have to report it. What's interesting here is that this step, um, advisors always tell us that we drop this step. We don't report. And by reporting, it means actually writing everything down, but also sharing it with others. And so in your groups, when you have these, these wonderful groups of children of different ages, have them, have them report to one another, have them explain to one another what, um, what they're finding as they're doing these experiments and these, these experiences. And then reflecting on the big idea is actually going back, again, more questions. What else can I learn from, from this? Uh, what other questions pop after having this, uh, this STEM experience? And how can I continue to learn through it? All right, so what does it mean in terms of language that you can use? So um, I, I, this slide is, has a lot of words, but I'm, I created it this way because I wanted you to be able to print it out later on. When it comes to observing and questioning, this is what we mean by observing and questioning, when you're facilitating in this way. So how does, how does it work? I wonder if, how can we find out? Is you really probing them to want to find out, to want to, um, uh, to build on that wonder and curiosity? What do you think will happen if? Can you find a way to? What do you notice? Of course, you see here also, I see, hear, feel, smell, taste, because um, uh, the, the senses are so important. When I do this, then it might look at what happened. First, I was, it was this, now it is 
So all of this, what you're seeing are ways or statements that help you create observations for them. And also initiate some conversation and some more questioning from their part. Then we investigate. Investigation requires steps, and that's why you have first, second, next, then. There is some planning that happens when you investigate. There's also the first one is an if then statement because it does require an, an hypothesis, right? What do I think that is going to happen? Well, if this, if I do this, then X, that is my hypothesis. How does X affect Y? It is that, uh, remember that we're talking about trial and error, cause and effect from an engineering perspective? Well, that's, that's the language that gets you at that engineering perspective. Well, what if we change or added certain things? Trial and error, what, did, what if we change or added this? Now let's try. Now let's look at some of the analyzing and reporting. At first I thought X. But now I know you're comparing what you observed with the evidence that you found as you did a particular experience. Because it's important, right? That's when the, the report really comes into in, in handy if you have written your observations. This shows that blank was best because. Um, if is very similar in construction and in terms of the wording. If this were to happen again, we know the idea of this process is that anyone that does the same experiment or does the same, takes the same steps as you did at, when you investigated could replicate what you found. And so that's why reporting and analyzing is so, uh, reporting in particular is so important, but also, that's why you have this statement um, at the very end when it comes to reporting. There, if this were to happen again, we know, we learn that this is true. Okay, let's keep going. STEM also comes with attitudes and let's not underestimate what, um, what these STEM attitudes can do. And the reason why I've, I've highlighted this in this particular case is because there's so much research related to how the first experiences that you had, particularly with math, um, but in general with STEM, um, in, in STEM careers, in STEM um, uh, classes, with, with teachers, all of this has actually a really big impact in young children as they grow older in the decisions that they make of whether or not they want to follow STEM careers or whether they feel like they, they, can, they can do these skills or they can, um, they can do science or math or they can become engineers. So when we um, show them that it's okay not to know, that part of it is the finding out is the exciting part. When we say, uh, let's find out, when you don't know the answer, and it's like, hey, you know what, let's Google it. When you ask, what do you think? You are building the type of STEM attitudes that we need, okay? So it's not about what you know about or not, don't know. It's about the, the willingness to learn. And, um, and it is very, very important because it really can make a huge difference um, in, in young children. And in children, as they grow older, it just affects them so, so much. So. What, whatever you're, you know and you feel like you know in, so, in any of these things, remember that is, that's, the knowledge is not necessarily the most important, it's your attitude towards learning that is going to help children later on. Okay, so we've learned quite a bit about STEM. And, um, and now I want us to go through some, let's do some eye spying the STEM edition of iSpy by looking at some photographs and, and talking about, well, you through the, through the um, questions section, um, talking about the STEM, the STEM concepts that you can observe in these photographs. Okay, the first one. See this kid. I want you to post in the questions, in, the, in, that, in that section where you ask some questions. I want you to write 
what you think, what STEM concepts you think is represented or are represented in this picture. I'll give you a little bit of time so that everybody can type something. Observation, observation, what birds are doing. Look, what are you looking at? Great. Counting, oh, look at this. We're getting more specific, I love it. Parts, hold on, I'm sorry. Let's see, math and what's happening, how they eat, yes. Wait, hold on, nature science, parts of the birds, how they move, yes, absolutely. What other things can be can they be observing? Let's see. What they eat, motion, how they move. She was wondering if they will get, come closer to her. Yes, colors. Yes, and, and you know, whether they come closer or not is a pattern, right? The movement pattern. Looking what the birds are doing, what they do with their wings. Observing parts of the bird, of course. What happens if you move closer? I love that the the your there's a mix of um, concepts, but also of that language that we presented earlier on. What happens if? Love that. Can you fly like a bird? This curiosity. Yes, you're seeing that STEM attitude of like, hmm. The child really thinking and, and being curious about these birds. What are they doing? The size. Yes, they are observing. That is life. You have your life, but the, you're observing characteristics or what, what does it mean to be alive, right? They're moving, they're eating. Very good. Copying. Why they're separated? Why are these birds creating the different patterns? And why are they separated? That's a great question. Let's see. She can make them run. Mm -hmm. How are they balancing? Oh, yes. Absolutely. How, they, how are they balancing and how, how they, can they walk with such different um, shape of feet, right? Your, they, she can be observing ah the the bricks. How many bricks are away from the birds? Fantastic! You're combining the the counting the math with um, uh, the placement of the birds. So we're we're talking about different um, math skills together, right? We are talking about um, geometry with placement where where things are in space as well as counting. These shapes, yes, there's shapes in the in absolutely there's shapes um, all throughout the um, the bricks. See patterns in the stone. Are they balancing? Thing? I mean, with this one, amazing. I mean, I I can keep going. Um, you can keep going. I should say. <laughs> um, you have so many different. Uh, observations and ideas, you had questions. With this one picture, in this one moment, you've covered so many of the things that we were just talking about. So this is just to, sh this is to show that every moment can actually really be a STEM moment. And what made this moment STEM moment is that you chose to highlight the concepts, right? If you choose to highlight the concepts and use the words and use the um, descriptions that STEMists will do, then this is a STEM moment. Um, and that for me was kind of an aha moment because when, when we were creating a, a project related to math, I kept telling, you know, I kept sending examples of, um, of, ex of exercises where kids were making hearts with with different shapes and I thought that well this is great you know like they're making they're using shapes to make hearts and the 
And what was funny was that the advisor kept telling me no, or I did shapes and stars. And he said, no, that's, that's not the best example. I was like, well, well, why isn't it the best example? She told me, if you wanted to have the best example, then they will be creating shapes out of shapes because that's when they are truly manipulating shapes in a way that um, they have to understand their properties. They have to understand what it means to be a triangle. They have to understand what it means to be a circle to create another one. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, when we make, and that's a simple, that was a simple change that I could have made in, a, in, a, in the activity. When we make these simple decisions, well, in our, in our everyday, in our activities, the, the growth and the depth of, um, of STEM concepts really can take place. All right, let's look at, a, at another. Here we go. I love this one. What STEM concepts do you see here? And I love this one because I can imagine you guys in something like this being pushed by a little kid, probably by more than one, um, and carrying a baby as well. So, uh, <laughs> so tell, tell me, what are some of the concepts that you see here? Force, speed, the wheels, yes, those are technology, that's that right there. You can have quite a bit of time just exploring how those wheels work and how, um, uh, and what they do. Very good, push and pull, force, science, engineering, math, in terms of, of uh, the, the weight, right? If different people actually sat on, on, on that little um, tricycle, I guess, or motorcycle, <laughs> on the little motorcycle, um, will it move the same way, right? There you have it, let's see. Weight, use words like heavy, big, gravity, technology. How hard is it to push? Yes, tools, age. Yes, how, um, let's see, hold on, I'm missing, how, oh, the surface, the surface, yes, is it move, is it, does it move faster in the surface than in the one next, next to it? We're seeing a possibility of, of an experiment right there. Heavy light. The wheels, do all the wheels go round? You know, and that's, that's an interesting, you know, if, if you actually just sat down and observed what happens to the wheels, why some of, sometimes some of them do not turn, go round and some of them do. So that, you don't have to know the answer, but you can do observation, you can, you can uh, manipulate the situation to see if that changes, okay? Let's see, distance effect, have trouble pushing, <laughs> I think the little boy might have, but um, what, what will happen if she get up? What, yes, what if she gets up and he's putting all this um, uh, force, right, to continue to move the, the bicycle? Cost and effect, that will be a really good experiment for cost and effect. Let's see. He looks pretty determined and strong. Yes, <laughs> yes, his little voice. Um, it's it's very determined to push. I think it's probably grandma. Um, so, but you can see this is another example of so much can be happening here. You don't need a complete setup in order for you to be exploring all of these concepts. One thing though that would be helpful in order for you to to take the mo to make the most out of the everyday moments that you have, maybe it is thinking about um, the mo think about your day. Let's take a moment to think about your day, about the routines that you have, and the same way that we're breaking down these pictures. Imagine yourself like, or maybe maybe literally take some pictures of you throughout your day, and do the same exercise. Do the same exercise and try to think about all the STEM concepts that you can be talking about. What language would you use? What questions would you ask? And it doesn't have to be the entire day, but that helps you. It's almost like a muscle, right? Getting that muscle re ready so that when the kids come in, 
you have that language ready to use. You have practice, right? Another thing that has um, helped in the past is actually having reminders with some of these questions, having reminders with some of the concepts, so that you know, in, in random places, you can put force in motion, or you can write in a little post-it note, force in motion, or you can write it in post-it note some of the questions. Why? Because sometimes it helps to remind us that because every moment can present itself as a STEM moment, you might be able to use some of those words and some of those concepts um, and explore them with kids there. So take that in consideration. Think about taking some pictures of, of your setting, but also of, your, of yourself with the kids from time to time, and then break down what those uh, concepts could be um, just the same way that we're doing here. Okay, now here, in these two pictures, now we're having some Muppets incorporated here, but I wanted to bring, bring about this, this picture because a playground is such a good opportunity for STEM. There's so much going on in the playground with force and motion and math. And you know, and and if you know, if you have a sand, they're building. There's so much going on in the playground that we should spend hours just looking at the playground and coming up with ideas. Um, so I know that we have we have half an hour, and we I wanted to cover some other things, but I want you to also perhaps as homework think about the playground and how how you could be using the playground also for some of these STEM vocabulary in particular. Look, look at vocabulary. Um, how do you incorporate some of these STEM vocabulary into um, the playground? Um, and the reason why I mentioned vocabulary is because we also want, want to be facilitators, and, and children love going to the playground and doing so much um, that we don't want to you know, disrupt. But words, you know, focus on a few words uh, a day when you go visit a playground and try to incorporate them so and facilitate that experience. Math words in particular, the spatial relations words are so important and so predictive of whether children are going to be doing well in math later on and they're not used enough. And spatial is, you know, is up and down, is uh, between, is below, all of these words. And the playground is a great place for us to be using them. Okay, now the next um, step that I want us to do is to think about the tools. And for this ex ex um, exercise, I want us to think about paper towel rolls and what we can do for paper, with paper towel rolls to create STEM opportunities. Why? Because they are, we have them, they're everywhere, they're simple. And there's a lot of opportunity um, with, every, with everyday stuff that we have in our homes to, to create these opportunities, to, to create STEM experiences. So I want us to, as a group, look at these paper towel rolls, and I want you to come up with some ideas of what would you do with these paper towel rolls to look through, to, to explore some STEM activities. So let's write down in the question section, some ideas on how these paper towel rolls can be used. See? Hold on. Hold on. There we go. I can scroll down. Oh, oh my goodness, you have so many already. STEM, momentum. Oh. Okay, okay. Here we go. Momentum to get one. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. This was before. Gravity, levers, teeters, totters. Yes. Which one is short or long? Using them as binoculars. You know, I want to, I, I like that. The using them as binoculars. We had, um, and, and you have so many ideas, it's hard to keep up. But um, we had a, an, an, a science uh, project where we were ex um, motivating children to be explorers. And one of the things that came up was that because children have so much that they can be seeing and their attention spans are not always 
long, <laughs> um, that sometimes if you use uh, paper towel rolls almost as binoculars to focus them on some, some things for them to observe, you will get a lot more observations. So yes, use them as binoculars and it helps to really focus down and having them um, perhaps go deeper in the observations that they make of the things that they're, that they're looking at. Um, stand them in order. That is great math. Telescope like a pirate. See, musical instruments, yes musical instruments what and and how do we make this musical instrument into an experiment is the question right can we um play around with how the 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 sound will come come out when the paper towel roll is different sizes can you experiment can you um investigate i should say experiment needs and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later but it needs a um a constant uh, for the test. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You can make ramps, measure with them, build a house. Absolutely. See. And if you take it one step further, build a house for who? Or for whom, I should say. Right? Um, that way, they have to measure whatever toy they're building the house for and actually make the house that matches those measurements. Let's see, all of them. Sound of microphone, yes. How, do, how does my, my, my voice change when I'm using the paper towel roll? Create a tree, build a bridge, my, yes. Um, mount them on the wall and hold on and drop them drop marbles through them. Yes, and what happens to the marbles? Will they all come out at the same time? There you're exploring gravity. Binoculars compare sizes, telescope length. Um, small, oh, roll mold, small balls and, and blow so that they can, they can um, pop very good or uh, binocular strains, race cars through. Yes, yes. And how we actually have a, a game where um, where kids are throwing uh, uh, race cars through a paper towel roll, and um, and depending on the angle, they have to make observations of what happens with the race cars. That is also an investigation that you guys can do. Building a city. Oh, I imagine that city. You if you actually make that one, you should take a picture and please send it to us. Let's see, kaleidoscopes using plastic wrap and markers to color the end. Ah, you're playing with light. light. Goodness, tower blocks. Um, I, I hope that Nic Nicole, if we could actually make a list of all of these wonderful um, suggestions because I hope that you guys are taking some some notes of your own um, ideas. A rainmaker. How can we make a, a rainmaker into an investigation is the question, right? So that we're exploring STEM. Um, the, 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 com the process skills, I should say, the process skills that come with STEM is a question. I'm posting to the group. What fit inside them? Very good. Small, higher. Let's see. Let's keep going. <gasps> cutting to make, cutting to make fit. Oh, how do we? Um, is cutting to make different things fit? And then you're talking about sizes of those things. You can see that to check how many objects can fit in them. Uh huh. Oh, I see. I see. Cutting to make things fit to check how many items can fit in them. Mm hmm. Ways to look through while looking through different sizes of tubes. Oh, ways things look while looking through different sizes of tubes. Yes, what do you focus on? Very good. Compare science, uh, sizes, put in sequence, large to small, which actually is one of the um, activities that we have in, in one of our handouts. <laughs> 
how does the voice change, create tools. So you see that the paper towel roll is, you know, the, for, for kids, understanding the paper towel roll is a technology, is also kind of an aha moment, but it's helping, right? It's helping making all sorts of jobs easier, particularly the one of carrying the original purpose, which is carrying the, the paper. Glue them together, make telescope with them, special two special binoculars. Very good. This is a telescope shakers. For all of these ideas, I want you to think of how we how what concepts you're you're um, incorporating and what language you're using to make sure that that the experience is full of STEM language, okay? That's very, very important. Again, if you don't use the language, the difference, if you don't use the STEM language, you're not really doing STEM. That's a big, big difference. And it's okay if you don't know how to define everything, you can find out, but you have to try to use some of that rich language, evidence, observation, investigation, and using it, in the planning of these activities, right, as well. Okay, very good. We have excellent ideas. Um, in our videos, we you will see Elmo and Abby using, I mean, we, we don't have as many videos as ideas <laughs> that you provided, but um, using them for some of the things that you've mentioned. Um, Elmo um, manipulates his sound by blowing uh, through the paper towel roll, you see Abby um, observing and focusing the observation by using it as a, as a uh, binocular telescope. And then here, they, they did a little car, um, again, uh, using the paper towel roll as, a, as the body of the car. Um, if when you're using, when you're making something like the car, then you use the car to investigate, right? And that is what really will give you the depth of experience for, for STEM and, and the opportunity for the process skill. And then the building of the bridge, you're making so many observations and you're trying different things, trial and error, that that in itself is a very rich um, STEM experience. Okay, so we've gone through so many incredible ideas. Now let's reflect for a minute. STEM is about teaching children to observe, investigate, ask questions, and think about what they discover. How does STEM complement the activities you already are doing in your programs? Um, I want you to share some of this. Or, um, oh, oh, you keep going with more ideas. Um, I want you to share how you think STEM complements the activities in your program. Something tells me that you're doing quite a bit already, um, STEM-related activities or exploring some of these concepts. But if you have, if you're particularly proud of a STEM idea or, or an activity, or you're thinking that you can incorporate a STEM concept in one of the activities that you do every day, please share with the group. This is the moment. Um, we're gonna keep going. But I want, I want the conversation to continue in the question section because I think that the, these ideas are so, so helpful um, for the group. Okay, so I promised some of the, of the more, let's say, uh, planning intensive ideas. And for those, actually, we have quite a bit of, of material. So let me show you where the material is and let me, um, go through it so that you know what to expect when you look at it. We created some years ago an entire portal related to STEM. And the portal is in on sesamestreet.org slash STEM. If you go to it, and let me click here so that I can, there we go. You go to it, this is what you're going to see. It's basically almost like a um, what we call a toolkit. All of these materials are in this one place. Um, this is where you're going to be landing, it says STEM. And what you will see are these kind of um, uh, buttons, I guess, buckets of information. When you click on each one of these, let me click on experiments, just so that you know, see what happens. 
it takes you to more material. So in this one, what you will see is everything related to experiments. Experiments are very specific in that you have to have um, a test. You have to be able to, uh, some sort of control, you have to be able to compare your, um, your investigation with a control, with a, um, uh, um, a, uh, a trial that doesn't, that has, has not changed. So for example, if you are, um, I remember when I was uh, younger, um, we did an experiment about different fertilizers and which ones worked better. And so what we did was that we had the same bean uh, potted in different um, uh, pots of soil with different, each one with different fertilizer and then one control that didn't have anything. What happened? And so what we did is afterwards, when we were making observations, we would compare the ones that had the different fertilizers to the control so that that control served us for the, for the one thing that didn't, you know, for the, for the, um, I guess, situation that didn't change. And so very similarly for young kids, when we're talking about investigations and we're talking about specifically experiments, you need to have that. Um, what happens, well, I have some, I work with infants and I have a nest, a nesting bowl that have different colors. We use so many for measuring, sorting, fantastic. Um, when, when we're talking about, I, I looked at infant and I see that you already are doing some of these, um, in your uh, uh, descriptions, you're already doing a lot of this planting of the seeds and, and having children observe. So the next step would be to find or, or to design your own experiment so that you, the kids are comparing things to one control. Um, but you don't have to design it by yourself because we have an entire section here that gives you examples of some of these experiments. Um, the, it, when you look into the website, that's what the first thing is going to be providing you. You go into experiment. What is, what does it mean to experiment? Um, but then if you keep clicking this Murray experiment and you will see uh, this type of format in other, in other sections is great because it actually has Murray trying an experiment. Let me just, that it starts with a question which of course experiments usually do, as we know from the process skills. Then you have the teacher facilitator that is telling you, how do you catch a bubble? It's your question. The facilitator that is going through the experiment and, and showing you step-by-step step what she's doing with the kids. In this particular case, she is doing an experiment where kids are trying uh, different surfaces to see where the, the bubbles pop. What type of surfaces do the bubbles pop? And they're trying soil, they're trying a soapy hand, um, and they're trying something else. Let's see. Soil, soapy hand, and I think it's a dry hand. And so the kids are making observations based on what they they feel and what they what happens to the bubbles. The one thing in the ex, this particular experiment that I would um, uh, improve is that it doesn't have the reporting section. You don't see the kids actually writing down what they are observing, which is a big a big part of of obviously as what we're talking about. Um, so. There is this video, there are other videos explaining experiments. And then when you keep going down the website, this section for educators and for parents, the educators one, let me click so you see what, what you get. You get lesson plans. The first section of the lesson plan is key vocabulary with their definitions. These are all words that you should be using related to experiments and how you can explain it to young kids. 
it talks to you a little bit about experiments and um, some of the things that we've been talking about reviewing results and, and the steps. And here, don't pop the bubbles. It goes step by step um, on how to replicate the, the, the bubbles experiment. Um, and in this particular case, you're using different, different um, surfaces, but um, they're easier to find and, and probably easier also for, for mixed age groups. So that's why, that's why the surfaces are slightly different. But you go step by step. Um, it gives you language to use the steps on the activity and what language you can do uh, use as well to explain and look at the end you can report because we give you a handout where kids can actually be writing um, their observations all the evidence um, that they are gathering in in these in these handouts you get in in each one of these little packets you get at least three activities and each one of the activities have handouts. So one, one very nice thing to do is that after you have tried some of these experiments, you staple these handouts, uh, these um, data collection handouts, and create a little book of all the different experiments and all the different data that kids have been doing, have been collecting in your program. As a parent, I can tell you, I love that. This is the second one, growing seeds. It's the other experiment, the day, water, no water, what happens? And then there's a family newsletter. I'm going to be completely honest with you. The family newsletter, um, the first page is good. It's helpful because it's very every day. The second page is supposed to be for families, but it's a little bit more intense. And because it has, it has an activity that sometimes requires stuff. Um, it's hard for families to do, even though you know the stuff that they it's not hard to find, but but still it's it's a little bit more um, evol involved. So I actually prefer these experiments and these um, activities that are in the newsletter for for educators for educators to use because I think they're they're more um, uh, you can make the most out of them. So really, you have the three activities with the three handouts. And let's go back. This is in just one of the buckets. Let me show you. This is, I, I just clicked on experiments. So if you go to say for, you have experiments, building, construction, measurement, properties of matter, force and motion, and sink or float. For each one of these, you'll have some the same the same packet of material. So you have 12 activities with their handouts. You can really make a nice uh, book of of um, experiments for for your kids if you try them. And and you will you know of course take it as a seed of an idea. If you have to make changes to the activities for it to fit. Um, your mixed eight troops or or um, different settings that's that's totally fine. Um, it's a it's a really good place to start with something that requires a little bit more planning. I love properties of matter, but it's because I'm a you know because I'm a chemical engineering I can't I can't say goodbye completely to loving chemistry. All right, that's an aside. <laughs> All right, so if we go back. I showed you where to find these packets of materials and activities. This is what you can expect for each one of the activities we have included. Um, there, there is a video that is on the website that you can use. It serves either as an introduction to the experiment itself or as an introduction to the concepts in the material. Um, it, it also I find very useful, you know, almost more for for me than for the kids because it helps me see how the facilitator was able to balance the imparting some of the knowledge and some of the the concepts and also letting kids explore and try the activity and get dirty and have fun. So I think that that's helpful for me to to see what that balance looks like. Then you have the classroom activity, um, the hands-on activity that, that um, is step-by-step. Step. And then the website also has interactive elements that can serve as a very, very good 
homeschool connection. You can have the, the kids, if you've been measuring a lot, you can have the kids practice some of their measuring by using some of these interactives. Um, let me show you quickly, because I don't think that I showed you in the website where those interactives are. So you keep scrolling down. We clicked on this section for educators to find the packet. We keep going down. Here are the games. You can click here too to find the packet. They're the same. Okay. Very good. All right. In addition to that, I wanted to let you know in Sesame Street in communities.org, we have a webinar with um, our consultant, Rebecca Honig, and she um, it's actually a webinar that came about because of our work with NAFCC. It's not really a webinar, it's more like a video where you can um, watch with the kids and do and move to different STEM concepts. Um, we have the move and learn not only for STEM but for literacy and for other things, but the STEM one is really fun and you can watch it at the same time as the kids um, and if you need something to fit to do physically and you want to explore some of the stem concepts it's it's a really good way of uh, of doing so so if you go to sesame street and communities.org let me just click here so i can show you it is in the webinar section oops it, it popped really quickly let me close it so that i can show you where it is it's in the webinar section you scroll down and here it is the little girl with the with the the gears and that's Rebecca, um, who guides you through it. And you will move and create a bridge and do all sorts of things together. Um, with it, it really doesn't require um, uh, materials. You can actually do it in the moment. You'll see how she very ingeniously figures that out. OK. So that is another resource. So I've shared with you um, some of the concepts that that helped us create the materials. We, I shared with you um, uh, the opportunities. We actually, you shared with me, I should say, the opportunities for everyday STEM based on the concepts that we discussed. And you have more. You can plan these STEM experiences uh, that follow the, scientific, the, the STEM process skills by using the materials in the website. Um, they're not hard to do, they're actually quite quite easy step by step. But you have to think about when, um, where you can make it happen so that everybody can participate. Um, and of course, you know, I know that you have uh, younger kids with older kids. Uh, you know, we're talking bubbles, we're talking ramps, we're talking um, uh, using a little toy cars. So it's, it's not something of creating these STEM, these STEM opportunities. They can definitely be part of the gang trying to experiment and to investigate, so. All right, if you have any questions, I want to say thank you for participating. If you have any questions, please, please let me know. Um, this is my email and our Facebook page. And of course, you can visit us at sesamestreamcommunities.org for, for more information. Um, again, the materials that we talked about today are actually on Sesame Street in uh, sesame slash stem. Um, uh, we will we'll make sure to send an email with with the direct link. So thank you so very much and thank you thank you for staying a little bit longer today and for going through all of these stem um, concepts and ideas with me. Thank you, Rocio, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, just like she said, we'll make sure that we get you that email with um, a link to view this recording so you can watch it again, um, as well as the PowerPoint, any other resources. And we'll make sure to compile that list, like Rocio mentioned earlier, with all of your amazing answers, because there are so many great ideas that were shared. So we'll get those sent out. And then it, that email will also have a link to take the webinar quiz um, so you can get CEU credit if that's what you're looking for. Um, and since we are a little bit late, um, we'll kind of skip the questions, but she does have her contact information up there that you can send questions to. Um, thank you again, Rocio, and everybody have a great night. Thank you.